One of the things I love to do most is find fresh flat earthers who think that through their videos they're bringing fresh ideas to the internet. And that is precisely what I've done for today's Flat Earth Friday. Does this flat earther have anything different to the rest of them? Let's find out. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick shout out to the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. They have so many classes that would interest you guys. Stargazing for beginners, uh, algebra for physics, orbital motion classes, and this landscape astrophotography course, which as I mentioned last time, is something I really want to do. But before I do that, I need to know a lot more about cameras. So I've been looking at this Fundamentals of DSLR Photography class by Justin Bridges before I even try. I want to be 100% down with the basics before I even try something that is a bit more difficult. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, which means there are no adverts. Plus, they're always releasing new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. No matter what 2021 brings you, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes because time is what we make of it. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free one month premium membership trial so you can explore your creativity. Right, back to today's video, where we're taking a look at one of the new Flat Earth videos or creators that I've found. And it goes by the name of Flat Earth Truth, Terry E. Riker. And we're gonna take a look at his video, which he has entitled, Irrefutable Evidence. Should be interesting. Here we go. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just wanted to do a really short video on a flight from New York to Moscow, Russia. Okay, now if you look up the flight pattern on Google Maps, it will show you a route leaving New York, going through the tip of Canada, then through the tip of Greenland, then through the tip of Iceland, through Sweden, and then into Moscow. And there is an excellent reason for this the projection of a globe onto a 2D map like the Mercator one that you're showing here. Now let me zoom in on this map so you guys can see that better. Like I said, it leaves New York, goes through the tip of Canada, through the tip of Greenland, through the tip of Iceland, over Sweden, and then into Moscow. And we aren't refuting this. Here is what it looks like on a globe as part of a great circle, which is of course the shortest path between two places on a globe. So Terry's little map here matches reality. Now, doesn't that seem a little bit awkward to you guys? We all know common sensely the fastest way from point A to point B is in a straight line like this here. Sorry, just quickly, common sensely. But anyway, yes, it is a straight line, which is a line from the great circle, which if you look at the image here I just showed from above, it looks pretty straight to me. I mean, you do not have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. It's common sense from point A to point B is a straight line that will always be the fastest and shortest route. The problem is you have drawn a straight line on a Mercator projection, which means when you adapt that for a globe, it will no longer be the shortest route. So anyways, on a globe, this would be your shortest route from New York to Moscow. Incorrect, as I just mentioned. But instead, this is the route that they give you. Now, I'm going to show you why they take this route. Obviously, I've just explained why, but we'll see if his reason is just as good. Let's go to the flat earth map. Now, check out what you have to pass to get from New York to Moscow on a flat earth map, a straight line. Check this out. The edge of Canada, the edge of Greenland, straight over Iceland, 
straight over Sweden and into Moscow. Oh, don't want to pull you up too much here, Terry. But if we look at an actual straight line on your flat earth map, we can see that it passes north of Iceland, whereas the Great Circle Line passes south of Iceland. Just saying. Huh, imagine that. There you go. Now it makes sense. The flight pattern makes total sense on a flat earth map because it has to go straight across those countries to get to Moscow. Now here's what the sun should be doing on this type of flight. The plane leaves here from New York. You're going to see the sun do this right here. You're going to see it moving in its summer solstice. You're going to watch it because it doesn't set in the northern hemisphere right up here in the Arctic, around the Arctic Circle, which you have to pretty much cross almost as the Arctic Circle is about right here to get to Moscow from New York. So you should be able to see the sun the whole time coming around as you're flying from New York to Moscow. This is what you should see on, the, on your left side the whole time. You should see it go out. It should fade out of your distance just a little bit and then come back around and meet you before you ever get to this destination. If you leave New York going to Moscow, you will see the sun the whole time and it will come around and meet you in the east before you ever get to your destination here in Moscow. Well, depending on the time of year that you fly, that could be the case. But as this flight is not completely in the Arctic Circle, I would postulate that the sun would actually set at some point. And I'm going to show you that right here on video. Check it out, guys. Okay, let's skip forward a bit. Now, this flight was taken in the summertime during the evening hours from New York to Moscow. So that means the sun, that would have been a straight line from here to here. So that means the sun is making a small circle. So here's what you would see at this time of the day. If you leave here going to here, you would see the sun over here like this. And then eventually fade out of your vision for a little bit, but you would still see its light. And then by the time, like I said, you got back to here, that sun would beat you here. So actually, this is what the sun is doing. Of course, we all know that the plane is in fact rotating with the Earth, so we will see the sun set. Um, I'm not being funny, but that sun has pretty much set, buddy. So this has just proven you wrong, hasn't it? So we killed two birds with one stone. We proved why the flight pattern passes over Greenland, Canada, Iceland, and Sweden. Because it has to. That's what's in the straight path between New York and Moscow. No, that was more of a misunderstanding about great circles, flight paths, and Mercator projection maps. On a flat earth. Now, the second thing we proved is in the summer solstice, the sun makes a small circuit. And you've seen the whole flight. The sun never disappeared. Its light stayed in view the whole time. And then it came back around and beat the plane to Moscow. But it did set, which it wouldn't do if the earth was flat. Checkmate, buddy. You've debunked yourself. Well, there we go. What a turn up for the books that was, hey? Thank you all so much for watching another Flat Earth Friday. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like the video and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. Just enough time to once again thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Remember the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description gets a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend. And I'll see you all on Tuesday where the man who I've heard keeps a giant inflatable banana in his backyard, which he calls Dr. Peel, Mr. Matt Powell official, is back. See you then. <laughs>